Saturday night, for the first time in NFL history, it's the one seed against a seven seed because for the first time in NFL history, a seven seed beat a two seed, even though it's a short four-year history. It's still the first time in the history (laughs) of the National Football League that one faces seven as the Packers travel to San Francisco to take on the 49ers. Again, nine and a half. Same spread as Ravens, Texans, 50 and a half over under. So another touchdown in this one projected than in the earlier game. Chris, does your buddy Kyle figure out how to do what Mike McCarthy was unable to do against a Packers team that is far better than people are giving it credit for? Yeah, I, you, you know me. I'm picking the 49ers. Uh, I, I think the 49ers are in a class of their own in the NFC. I, I do. I think they're a notch above everybody there. I worry, like the Ravens conversation, I worry a little bit about the same things we, we discussed there, right? I, I don't care who you are and how hard you practice during your bye week and all that. You know, you got one team that, yeah, the, the Packers have been playing playoff football for the last five, six weeks, so they're ready to go. And there could be a little bit of a getting used to being back on the field in this kind of environment moment. But I don't think that's going to last long with the 49ers. I don't. I mean, again, this is another team like the Ravens. I'll even emphasize more. I think this, I mean, on a mission ever since that Eagles game last year. Definitely. The matchup I worry about with the Packers is their defense. Their defense has talent. That's the one great thing they got about it for sure, right? We've seen... Some offenses through the year schematically pick it apart. And Shanahan, of course, is a genius that way, right? So, you know, I don't know if LaFleur can get with Joe Barry a little bit and maybe try to teach him some of the things Shanahan's doing to help him out with some of the tricks there, whatever. But we know the 49ers in that offense, you know, unlike the team that the Packers had to play last week, they didn't really have to worry about the run game. This is a whole different ball game here. Like, if you don't worry about the run game against the 49ers, McCaffrey runs for over 200 yards against you, your offense never gets the ball, and you lose 42-10. to 10. So you kind of got to go all in in that aspect and then find the right way to defend in the back end. And we know the 49ers, I think more than any other years past, are, are the best passing football team they've been in the Shanahan era. And that's hilarious to say with Brock Purdy and right. I mean, all that he's done, he's the only first round, non first round quarterback playing this year in the playoffs. Uh, but we know he's been playing like a first round quarterback and he's efficient as hell. I, that's where I worry about the Packers. The other side of the ball, Mike, I think it's the 49ers defense that's not as good as maybe the last few that have gone to the NFC championship game. I think it's a notch down from that. And I think Green Bay is dangerous on the offensive side of the ball. And they can make plays, and they're pretty balanced as well, like you've heard me say. A lot of moving parts, a lot of motion shifts. They can run the ball, and Jordan Love will hang in the pocket a little like we were talking with C.J. Stroud. He might not fade up into the, or get up in the pocket. He hangs on his back leg, but he'll hang in there and wait for people to get open. I'm going to take the 49ers 30-21, to 21, all right? Nine and a half was a little too much for me in this one. I think this Packers offense will make some plays and kind of keep them hanging around this game and make 49ers a little uncomfortable as it goes on. I, I agree with the assessment that the Packers are going to see a running game like they haven't seen yeah. all year. Right. And that isn't something they had to worry about in Dallas. And and look, they, they figured out the key to beating the Cowboys in their own building. You jump on top of them early. You get to 14 nothing. And it's just a matter of the floodgates opening at that point because the Cowboys aren't used to getting hit in the mouth, right. especially not at home. If the 49ers give up an opening drive touchdown, you know what they'll do? They'll just yeah. turn around and score an opening drive touchdown. <laughs> I mean, right. it's, it's so what? We're not, we're not concerned by that. Our offense is going to be ready to pick apart the Green Bay Packers defense. The game plan will be in place to take advantage of all the things that Joe Barry and the Green Bay defense does well, the things they don't do well. We'll zig when they zag. Right. This is... This is the, the, the playoff football reality that we discuss all the time, where coaching matters more in the postseason than it does in the regular season. You don't just line your guys up and say, we're going to do what we did to get here. You got to do even more to get to the next level. So I'm with you. Now, I went back and forth a little bit on whether or not to give the 49ers the cover, because obviously I'm going to pick the 49ers to win. I did the same thing you did. 31-24, not the same score, but 31-24, 
49ers win, but the Packers find a way to keep it close. And I think this is along the lines of it'll be 31-17 late I garbage hear time touchdown backdoor right. cover. That's right. what I'm I don't think it's going to be. I think Ravens Texans is more back and forth and Ravens win it late. I think this is 49ers comfortably ahead, Packers don't go away, Packers don't give up and they get a late score that allows them to cover, not that they care about covering, but I just think that's what's going to happen. 49ers will clearly be the better team, but the Packers will find a way to keep it within the nine and a half. Yeah. And yes, that's my clumsy way of splitting the baby on these because I didn't have the guts to pick either number one seed to lose, but I'll go with picking the lower seeds to cover in both games because nine and a half is just a lot. That's a big spread for a playoff game, for a division round game. That's a lot to cover in any game, but especially in a game like this where you're talking about the underdog being a team that just won last weekend and that had to win the weekend before to even get in right. while the one seeds were coasting. So, yes, I think these games are closer than nine and a half would suggest, and I won't be surprised if one of these two one seeds ends up losing. I, I, I hear you there. I mean, again, if there's a week for the number one seed to be had, this is the week. Traditionally, this is when we see the upset of the team not play at their best. And, you know, if they do get through this week, then they kind of got their feet underneath them and they're ready for the AFC championship or NFC championship or whatever it may be. I'm going to be interested about that Packers defense approach, right? That's to me where I think is going to be really interesting. I, I think it could be a game where they play a lot of five man fronts, Mike. The Packers do, they're young. This is the youngest team in football. Right, So they're not battle-tested and, and used to this. And their talent, they're not going to be outclassed. I said this on my podcast yesterday, not going to be outclassed by the talent on the field. It's about what we talk about a lot with the 49ers. Can you play at a high level with the highest of intensity to match that and then be all over every little detail and not mess that up either? And that's where the Packers are still young and growing in those departments as the 49ers are well-seasoned in those departments. But if the Packers might... Mike, like they got a Tadaro Slayton, 93, who's 340 pounds. You know, they got, of course, Devontae Wyatt, first round pick two years ago from Georgia. He's 315. And then, of course, Kenny Clark at 314. Uh, I wouldn't be shocked if we saw all three of them on the field together a lot. Right. Let's get three big people on there. Now we got Preston Smith and Rashawn Gary on the outside. We can drop one, rush one every now and then, but we're big. And now we can hang in there versus the run game and maybe not have to overplay with linebackers and safety versus the play action that Shanahan and Purdy are so good at. That would be one thing, uh, just a little X's and O's to look for for everybody out there. Yo, yo, what up, homies? Thanks for watching. Remember, subscribe to Chris Sims on Button. Right now, we got Sunday Pod, right? So you can have it Monday morning. We recap all the action. Wednesday, it's the What the F*** Happened podcast. We're going to get deep in the weeds on the key matchups of the week. And then Thursday, I'm picking games with that jerk Florio. So you know where to find us, homies. Keep watching. Peace out. We'll see you.